Hello and welcome to the Unusual Comparison Podcast with me, Ronnie. And me, Safi. And, uh, I mean, I was holding back on starting this podcast for a while, but uh, then Safi brought up a good point to me, which is... Which is, today is the 1st of February, which means it's been a year since we lost Montione. Montione, if you don't know, is um, a lead animator in Rooster Teeth, and uh, he passed away in an accident last year. And it was very tragic, was very, 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 tragic. very sad. Um, and, you know, he's he's a trailblazer. Mm. He did so much with his life and he didn't even live that long. And uh, and people have been doing this thing they're trying to do. Uh, Monty Ohm project. It's, yeah, the Monty Ohm project was set up, which is basically I think the, the thing that everybody knows about Monty is that he he's just been downright inspiration. Mm. Um, for people to just get yeah. up and go and do the things that they've been planning to do and not holding back on them. Yeah, um, there was a phrase, and I can't even remember it. Like, the quote everyone keeps remembering. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward, that's the one. Which sums him up. And I think... That sums up so well. If, yeah, if you saw... Did you read Barbara's um, yep. auntie journal? And she summed it up really, really well in that one closing sentence, which is, we've kept moving forward, but don't think that we're not taking you with us. Yeah. Um, so the, the aim of this project is, you know, like we said, to just get up and do the things that you've been planning to do and not holding back on them anymore. So, yeah. And I've been planning to do this podcast for a while now. Um, I've been planning to do individual podcasts for a while. I say individual, just do one that's off from the Tricking Service podcast, which yeah. we don't listen to, which you probably will do, because I feel like there's a Venn diagram of our yeah. listeners and it'll be the same. Yeah. Um, it's a podcast we've been doing for over a year. Yeah. Um, while trying to do other things to the side and basically came down to podcast. And, yeah, uh, well, I, th- I think reason, one of the reasons why this was a good point to bring up is that we kind of stopped doing podcasts for yeah, a for long a time. Like 11 months. While we were trying to figure out how to do a web series, which we're not going to be able to do now, but we've yeah. started the podcast back and, up again. Um, yeah, we're going to find other stuff to do. It's just that none of us have the time to commit every week to go and film. And, you know, I don't think that's any of us... We thought that was the direction we wanted to go in, and I really don't think it is. And, well, there you go, you know? You've yeah. got to deal with it. Yeah. And this is a fever dream podcast that I started here. I was incredibly tired, and I was like, what's the most frustrating thing I can do to myself on a podcast? Mm. And I figure you get two really specific pro- uh, two specific subjects, especially if I don't know about them that much, and uh, compare them yeah. for 20 minutes, force myself, and... Uh, I have to do, I'm doing it, we do it live, so I can't even, like, get prepared to what can, what can <laughs> well, prepare. Yeah, we've got, you've got um, a list of really specific subjects. Uh, subjects. We've got a random number generator, so mm. we're going to generate. Yep. And, um, I mean, every, I'm going to keep asking for people to send some in. Uh, we're going to have to probably tweet as well, bring some in, yeah. till we get an overwhelming stupid amount. and uh, specific topics. And I mean specific. Some of them are just unquestionably stupid and I'm excited for them and yep. some of them I can't even don't even know where to start I'm going yep. to research some areas um, while on air I guess and yeah. um, are we so, allowed oh, that's a question I had are we allowed to research subjects while we're doing it I figure some of them we're gonna have to because okay. we have no, no choice <laughs> yeah um, so this week we we've put in one ourselves and that's the one we're going to talk about. And that is Ruby, because that was Monty Owens. You know, that was his project. That was his, that was his That's his legacy. Yes. I mean, he's got quite a few, but that's his main legacy. Yeah. And so we figure whatever is our second one, that one's going to be one we compare it to. Yeah. So now we've got to find a way to compare it with what, whatever we do. Yeah. So we set up the number so we, generator. we don't know which one we're doing yet. We're doing this live on air. We'll see if we have to change that later. All right, so we've got number six. Number six on is... One, two, three, four, five. This Be The Verse by Philip Larkin. Fucking hell. What is that? Now, this is a poem. I know this poem. It's a a poem which I will read for you. I don't need the analysis right now. All right. Can I read it? I think you should listen to it the first time. Oh, okay. You might enjoy it, though. Okay. Here we go. They They fuck you up, your mom and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults they had and add some extra just for you. But they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old cell hats and coats who half the time were soppy stern and at half at one another's throat. Fucking hell, I fucked it up. That's why I said I should read it. Man hands on misery to man. It deepens like a coastal shelf. 
Get out as early as you can and don't have any kids yourself. Right. This is this is actually a great poem, and it's also it was co- it was covered by someone else. Who's that really famous poet? Covered it. Oh, fucking hell. You're asking me, a person who knows nothing. All right. About well, who that really um, famous poet is. Someone someone can tell me because I'm an idiot. Um. Basically, yeah, that was the poem. Uh, we'll have it loaded in the background. Right. And uh, I actually don't think this is as bad as it could be. There, there could be some worse ones thrown in there. Yeah, I suppose the great thing about analysing poetry is that you can say whatever the fuck you want. Well, this one is clearly <laughs> about parents fucking you up. And yeah. I'll say, in Ruby, in <laughs> Ruby, man, do we have some comparisons to make. I just I don't think, even know where to start. Yeah, I think... Oh, well, we should also add that uh, Safi doesn't hasn't seen season three. Right, So yeah. I'll make allusions... But okay. I won't go in, in. Okay. which sucks for Fair a enough. podcast, but you know. Sounds about it. Well, you didn't know we were going to do event. it. I'll get there eventually. You didn't know we were going to do it, yeah, so whatever. Okay. Um, and actually, you know, this isn't a bad idea. I might do it like this from now on. You know, I won't, I'll always, I'll have one subject prepared and then compare it with whatever. So I know I at least have like one meaty like <laughs> subject to talk yeah, about for another. Yeah, that, that does make sense. So, um. So, yeah, this be the verse by Philip Larkin. If you're listening, you might as well pull it up. It's literally three... Uh, Verses. Thank you. Is that yeah. a songs, isn't it? Uh, isn't it stanzas? So it's your, your, is, I thought stanzas was a line. No. Okay, stanzas then. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out um, as we go. There's, there's three verses slash stanzas. There's three seasons of Ruby. There's one for you. Oh, oh, and like, oh. and like the show, it gets deeper in, in to the real issues. All right. Shit, bro. We got Shit, it. Bro. We gotta... <laughs> and that actually makes sense when it comes to season, uh, season three, because there are a lot of things like that about not having kids yourself that might want to, okay. but, um, no one accidentally gets pregnant. I'll say that now, okay, just good. before you start worrying. All right. They're all like 13. It's all good. Yeah. Um, so who do we start with first about fucking other kids? I mean, Weiss. Weiss. Whew. You haven't met her sister yet, but no. um, you can tell like this wasn't just like just her. It is her family in the way right. they're, they're structured. They seem very, you know, rigid. It's almost like the. It almost feels like oh, it's the German name. It kind of feels like that German kind of upbringing. You know, the very stiff upper lip. Stereotypical, obviously. Yeah. But um, that kind of upbringing where it's like you have to earn approval mm. and you kind of see that in them because winter the older sister she's really just like are you making the right choice by being here and stuff like that it's like your older yeah. sister man should you be doing this talk yeah but um you know weiss is very set in her ways she had was very prejudiced towards the beginning yes uh even towards season two isn't it yeah yeah she kind of turns that around i think she still has some but i think you know as prejudice goes, kind of in the set, so she's got to work it out. Yeah. Um, but I mean, she is. She really wants to be the one leading. She wants to be the one that can be approved. You know. Yeah. You get her. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's it. That's all I have to add. Just, yeah. But I mean, what is the whole challenge that she did with the this knight in armor? Do we know where that was from? I don't. Well, you know more than I do. Why? Not necessarily. Me? Yes. Oh my god! You're but a it's whole like, season ahead of me. That felt like kind of like, you know, what's the what's this in the song Mirror Mirror? It yes. says about the royal test. Yeah. And I feel like that's what it kind of was. Maybe it was like her family. You have to go th- in a sort of like dynasty thing. You kind of have to go through this test yes. to fight someone to see whether you can make it. And in that case, it's kind of fucked up because she's got scarred for life yeah. fighting someone that her family put her towards. True. Taffy, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be on this level. You gotta come to this level. Come on. You came to the party. You gotta bring the drinks. You gotta drink up. I'm drinking water. Well, we don't have to tell the audience that, because now oh. we can't say pour one out for Monty because it would just be water. That's pretty lame. Well, it's hydrating. It's good for your system. He didn't so. drink anyway. I swear. I don't know. I don't think. I think they said he didn't drink. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, she's clearly been fucked up by her parents there. I mean, I don't think we know that much about her mum, but I think we know about her dad. Okay. Well, I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, when, when did you watch it? She talked about it in season one and season two. Okay. Sorry. I'm not good here. I'm, you should kick me off. As in you the should, show yeah. or Taffy? <laughs> I haven't seen it in ages. I'm sorry. You came here with the idea. You've got to be able to roll. All right, I'm rolling. 
this is entirely the point of the podcast, by the way, if you're listening. Um, if you're listening, I mean, that makes no sense, really. <laughs> if you are listening. But um, the entire point of the podcast is just to stress it out in terms of okay, looking and at something and analysing. We've got two comparisons in and I'm already falling apart. Yeah, this is how I planned the podcast to go. Um, I thought I thought you might be able to bring in something. Uh, well, you thought wrong. You thought wrong. I'm all talk, no swagger. Well, then talk, because this is what the podcast is. <laughs> I mean, I'm all swagger, no talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, who? so who else well, we is talk- fucked up by their mum and dad? Or are we off well, right now? Well, we can talk about Jean. Okay. Because, you know, he... He went into the school like, by cheating. True. Because his family are hunters. True. And, uh, yeah, he's doing this all to test him. And he's not ready for this. I mean, clearly they make it out that he's ready for this. But, you know, he kind of jumped into a, a combat lifestyle with, like, no, he wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough training, but he really thought he had to. In that way, it's kind of similar to Weiss. Yeah. Even with their difference, to, yeah. differences in personality. At least, but Weiss can actually do stuff. That might be the difference. <laughs> yeah. They're both whiny piss babies. True. I do love Weiss, though, so I can deal with that. Yeah. Hmm. Jean, however. Jean, Jean, Jean. Um, there's also the thing about, um, you know, Ruby and Yang. Yes. Their parents. Yes. And, um, that their, I think it was season two, wasn't it? Where there was that, like, backstory. The really, the really emotional really Blake and Yang done scene. done scene which I really, fucked me up i really love that like i don't even know what to the, call it the shadow the, puppet the, styles yeah, that they like, do yeah like they did it um, in a the when they were telling yeah when they took in harry potter when they were telling the story about the the wand and the oh uh, what's it called the 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 brothers the three brothers yeah the beetle and the bard or that's something that's the one yeah 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 and, and um, just oh I it's love, so beautiful yeah it is style. and uh, also that scene was a very big scene um yes. and uh we find out backstories because before then it was kind of confusing. It's like they're sisters, there but are they? Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, different surnames, different everything. There is nothing similar to them. Yeah. Um, and that yeah, we found out that. Intense. <laughs> so we found out, you know, they have, you know, Ruby's uncle. Yeah. Is Yang's dad. Yes. I've seen like on Tumblr pictures of the family tree, and there's no easy way to <laughs> explain it. And um, uh, yeah, I'm googling now. Um, and Yang's mom left left them, but she kind of like. Wait, do we not know who the father is? What's this about Cinder Fall? Wait, Crows, they're both their uncle, but not, neither of them the father? I thought Crow was Ruby's dad. I don't, I don't know, I'm confused. Now. I guess they're half-sisters, and Crow's both their uncle. And Yang's mum... Okay, so apparently they're from different fa- uh, different par- different fathers... Oh, sorry, different mums, same father. And, you know, Ruby's is clearly Summer Rose, and Yang's is uh, Mother Sh- Xiaolong. We would have no idea who the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. So according to this, the father is Taiyang. I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, right. Yeah, everyone's saying they're half sisters, basically. Right. Oh, so Raven Crow is Raven's brother. So he's yeah, yeah, both yeah. their uncles. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Only Ruby's by association. Yeah. So what happened with both the both the parents? Like, what happened to Summer? I still don't know if I'm to Summer. I still don't know either. I thought you would know. I don't know. And what, I don't know you to Raven. You keep asking me these things and the father the is season. Well, we can still talk about here. It's a meaty thing. Yes. All they got is basically this drunk uncle called Crow. And I don't know, you haven't really met him. No, I've seen images of him and apparently he looks exactly like Joel Heyman. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. But he's pretty, he's pretty drunk and he's just like... Like, you know, the cool uncle type. Yeah. And apparently he's, like, the only one who's been looking after them. Right. And, I mean, in that case, you know, the cool uncle is never the good one to raise them. <laughs> no. And, you know, we talk... I mean, she, Ruby's talked about how, like, Crow taught her everything she knows. Yeah. About weapons. And it's like... She's a lot younger than the others, and she's already more skilled. Yeah. So that's probably, probably made a really kind of weird, you know, childhood. Because, you know, without proper 
parents. Parenting, yeah. Yeah, and then Yang spends a lot of her time looking for her mother. Yeah. Who's who's coming back into the picture, but apparently she's some like stone cold bitch. That's mm. not that's not really to hang out with her daughter. And um. Let me look at the poem again. Carry on talking. I'm fucking up, fucking up the parent, uh, being fucked up by your parents, and you know. But like, uh, yeah, like the poem says, but they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old style hats and coats who at half the time were sloppy, stern and half at one another's throat, throats. I mean, you kind of get that about the families. Like they were all, um, they were all, um, what's it called? A hunting team, hunt, huntress, hunter team together. Yeah. And uh, I guess that made things pretty messy. I mean, if one of them's an alcoholic and three of them aren't here, I'm pretty sure Summer Rose is dead. Like that's, they must have had something fucked up to be able to be that, uh, just to bring it down to the others. Yeah. Safi, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really trying here. I'm trying. I know you are, that's why I don't have to. But you kind of do. you got to bring it. We've been running for 16 minutes, so you're going to... You only need like four more minutes, so you've got to bring in something to this uh, talk. I I brought in the opening thing, so I don't have to. Do you just said like Weiss, and that was. No, I said about the three thingies and the three seasons. Hmm. So. Well, how much you know about Penny? Uh, she's a robot, right? Yeah. So she was kind of like made. Yeah. And then like the father, the general, forgot his actual name, but he's like. You know, kind of her father in a weird way. Yes. But she's had like a military upbringing, upbringing everything she's yeah, learning. Yeah. And she's like a sweet, sweet girl who's just weird as hell because she's not human. And no one really hangs out with her. And and then Ruby was kind of the first person who treated her like... <laughs> just speak louder, man. Um, blah, 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 blah. Ruby was like the first person who kind of treated her like a normal girl, right? Yeah, like, I mean, in season three, you see this person who's like pretending to be like, I mean, she's clearly like a watcher or something. And even yeah. then, she talks to her like, I don't know, like in battle soldiers, like, we've got to go, we have to go this way, come on, it's time to go. It's kind of like, it's really like abrupt, they're not really like socializing. And it kind of makes you, your heart hurt, Penny. Yeah. And you don't know much about season three, so I can't even talk more about heart hurting here, but trust me, it's a it's a killer. Um, you just gotta watch season three. I know. I just, if I had known, I would have. <laughs> preparation, but here we are. I mean, um, what I can bring in now, which is completely fine to tell you, is that um, there's this really cool thing they've got, they've created, it's called like The Maidens. Okay. And it was based on a fake story, te- uh, fake fairy tale that's like from the world. And it's, it's also filmed like uh, the world of remnant things like the okay, old yeah, uh, yeah. puppets and chalk and whatever. Um, and it's like these these four maidens, spring, summer, autumn and winter, they were like, uh, they basically were gifted powers. And then these four maidens, like when one dies, they pass on the power mm-hmm. and it comes very big. And, you know, everyone's talking now about like these powers moving on to, of course, these four, because they pretty much emulate the idea of each of the each of the seasons. And people were saying, well, if you think about it, you've got winter. Mm-hmm. And that's the name of one of them, winter. Yeah. You've got summer rose. Yeah. And so a lot of people are sa- and a lot of people saying that these already exist. Like the, the mum's already the maidens. We already know who the full maiden is. Okay. Uh, and it's not one of them. It's not, it's not a character that uh, they know of. And people, a lot of people are trying to guess who they're going to be. Because, like, you know, at the main four, we'd know who would be who. Um, it's like... You know, if one of their parents, if one of their mothers is one of these maidens, are these powers going to pass down to them? Yeah. And if they are one of the maidens, it suddenly makes sense why they wouldn't be there. Because this is they've got, like, a giant power, which they kind of have to watch the world with. Yeah. And they've, they've got to protect them. And that would make sense if Summer was Summer. But then Summer Rose is dead, apparently. Mm. So then her power should have already passed on. And we know nothing about winter. We know who the full maiden is. We know nothing about the spring one. So, I mean, maybe it could be Raven. Raven, okay. if Summer died and Raven inherited the power, even if it was like the same generation, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of a lot of leadership skills that are up to it. And who? It's actually not one of the main four that they assume is going to have that power. 
I don't know if you can guess who, but it's like they pretty much think this this girl is the best in Beacon and oh, has the best qualities okay. and the best fighter. Yeah. So okay. you can pretty much guess. Yes. Do you want to say it? No, I don't want to say it. Why? Do you think you got it wrong? No, I know. I got it right. Well, why do you say it? Because I don't want to say it. Just say it. You're making me nervous. Do it. No. Safi, who do you think this full maiden is? Going to be. Well, this this thing, they're trying to work out who is going to be the next full maiden. They don't mm. know for sure, but they assume it's... It's Pyrrha. Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't say shit. <laughs> I don't want to say it because I am wrong. Uh, You're like teasing me there. Okay. Man. But can I say this line here? Who half the time was Sophie Stern and half at one another's throats. I think that kind of sums up in general, especially at the start, the kind of feel of the entirety of Ruby. Oh, then like the, the team members. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, there are so many fights and Sophie Stern, Stern. like... That's exactly like Weiss's attitude yes. towards him at first. Like, you clearly aren't doing this. Uh, you need to be up to this level. Well, and she was kind of doing it in like a very pathetic way at the beginning. You know, she wasn't. She it was more like a sulky. Well, I'm not the leader, but I should have been. Yeah. But it's not really like trying to bring people up, and it was kind of good in season two. You could see her come down to their level, but they also rose a bit to their like them being professional. You yeah. kind of get it with Blake as well. Like she likes to have fun. But we already know about Blake's family. Yeah. Well, Blake's history, in fact. We don't actually know much about Blake's family. No, but, yeah, her history, though. And we know what kind of person she is. In fact, why don't we talk about Blake? Because she said she was born into, basically, the White Fang. Right, yeah. Uh, we don't know anything Which, about her Which, again, like, this all goes back to, here it says at the beginning, they fuck you up, your mum your and dad, they may not mean to. And that seems to be the big theme here, is that, mm. you know, especially being born into White Fang, they add we assume <laughs> her, her parents... Mm. Thought they were doing the right thing, mm. but ultimately, you know, yeah. it fucked her up. They fill you with faults they had and add some uh, extra just for you. For you. you can think about it in the fawness way, yeah. as in she was born fawness, and then to her, they added that the fact that she would be a white fang member. Yeah. And uh, whether for better or for worse, that's what she is. And I mean, honestly, she's doing the best with it that she can. I mean, the big question here is is who the hell is Adam to her? Yeah. Because I, for a long time, was like, I mean, everyone had things thing, it's like, is it a boyfriend? Is it a brother? Who is this guy? And then in the latest episode, he says, my darling, when he sees Blake. Right. Now, that is quite... It was quite in a quite... It was quite a, like... It's... Like a joke... Like a sinister and meany way. Right. Like, so we assume it It could be a brother. Because, I mean, like... Not sorry, a brother. Um, a boyfriend. Because who says, my darling... Apart from a father, father and a brother. Yeah, oh, a father and a boyfriend. boyfriend. <laughs> not a brother. It's either think, romantic or fatherly. Yeah, it's you can't have... It's not It's not a brotherly thing. You don't no. say, my darling. I mean, it would just be weird. Yeah. So, is Adam the father? Or... But I feel like they I feel like they were too much, like... I don't know, fighting together. Yeah, I don't... I don't yeah. They purposefully haven't told us anything about her parents so far. Purposefully haven't. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because they're leading up to Adam being her father or if that's because they don't they want to leave that out for the moment. I mean, my first guess would be that Adam isn't her father. I mm. don't I don't see it. Yeah. But we don't know. We don't know. I mean They they leave us guessing on a lot of things and then they'll spin it around. Um yeah, here's the first male character introduced. Sorry, googling again. <laughs> um, yeah, he. I mean, Blake abandoned him, and that's gonna be, you know. No, <laughs> I like. We're just on on like the the Ruby Wiki, and I like that the first sentence about Adam is Adam is a tall man. You know. Um, I mean, it's just kind of hard to think about, like, because you, I mean, he wears a mask the full time, so it's not like they're even trying to give us a hint of his age. Yeah. That's another thing. Because if he's also hiding his eyes, because if he shows his eyes and it's the exact same as Blake's, we'd have an idea. And they've hidden yeah. his eyes so far. Do you not think that would be... I, I mean, and then that would kind prevalent. of link back to what they did in Red versus Blue. Yeah. Where they hid Carolina's, uh, sorry, the director's eyes, eyes for a long time yeah. until they could bring out, and then you're like, well, Carolina is clearly his daughter. Um, okay. You know, and 
you know, Adam has no care for human life at all. Um, and she does. And, you know, he, she abandoned him. So maybe, like, that was kind of, like, a real big moment. And maybe that will mean more in that case. Because if it was a boyfriend, it would be kind of just, I don't know. Like, you can always yeah. see people when they fall into groups and they think they like someone because of it. And then after a while, they get older. But I feel like Marzalino is a really good writer. And there's a lot of things that they... I mean, they've hidden a lot for, about Adam to us. Maybe it's because they're trying to build up him, him being a bigger character. But, you know, she... We don't know that much about him. And uh, in that case, does that not, like, give a hint that Adam might be related to uh, her in I some way? You're convincing me. You're convinc and also the fact that he's... What does it say? The leader of the White Fang? Yeah, he is. That would make sense to her being born into the White Fang. Mm. I'm just saying, like, they wouldn't tell anything about her family and then I was saying she was born into it and then re they refused to show his eyes uh, yeah. and the facial features where, especially in Ruby, that's where they draw stuff like wrinkles. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes they make you try and make it as obvious as they can in voices. Yeah. But, I mean, Anna would have been one of their first casted members looking back to the fact of the trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, they probably, I mean, they might have already known where it was all going, but they might not have. I feel like they did know. I feel like some things were added along the way, but I feel like a lot of it was yeah, pre-written. Yeah. Um, I feel like Adam could be the father. And in that case, it would be very interesting, especially with, to do with, like, the poem. The poem, yeah. Bring it back. Um, Bring it back, doing the old loop around. Because she was born into the White Fang and she had to, to leave her family who was still there. Like, cause we, cause they're so out of the picture at this point. Like, you know, we don't even know where they are, where they're alive. I mean, quite frankly, I feel like someone should have parents that are alive. <laughs> you know, just One someone. One of them's got to. Someone's got to have both parents alive. Um, I just wonder if Weiss's mum's alive because, you know, we know. I, th I'm pretty sure I know the dad's alive. Because she talk, I mean, yeah, the dad's alive. We they talk about yeah, the dad yeah. a lot. I have no idea about her mum. I don't know if I if I find it in page. Is it mom? Mom. Mom. That won't be mom English, no. mom. Uh. Well, this is interesting. Um. Da -da 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 -da. Doesn't seem to say anything about her mum. Yeah, I mean, they say nothing about her her mum. And maybe that's the reason also why they're very uptight and strict. Maybe it's the idea of, like, not having a motherly touch yeah. in the situation. And it was only this dad who was this giant leader of this company and could only give, you know, give what he could to the situation. Yeah, they, she, has no, she has no listed relative there. Mm. So, yeah, that's another point. Do any of them have alive parents? We know nothing about Pira, Nora, or uh, La uh, Ren. Mm. As I say, Lyren. <laughs> Stupidly of me. Um, mm. I mean, hmm. So in all, I think Ruby does work <laughs> with this poem. I think comparisons yeah. could be drawn. And in the end of the day, if I was forced to write an essay on it, I probably could. Yeah, with the proper research and having seen the third season. Yeah, with the <laughs> third season, I think you could go I'd full on it. I'd be able to bang it out, yeah. You know. So, gals, that is you can. Don't know any kids yourself. I think Ruby, you know what? I think it does do with that because apparently all the parents die as die, soon as they yeah. have a kid. So I think yeah. I agree with that statement. <laughs> don't have any kids no. if you're in Ruby. Um, and I think that pretty much will tie up the first episode of... Ruby, uh, sorry, this is not the first episode of Ruby. It's not the Fucking first episode hell. of Ruby. Copyright problems right there. Actually, that's what we're going to change the podcast to, just so you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, this is the first episode of Unusual Comparison Podcast. Um, we, uh, there weren't many comparisons made. Well, there's a lot of discussion about that's, Ruby. That's because... There was, the there was one big comparison here. And that I mean, was, if the know. poem doesn't go that deep, to be fair, it's just telling you the parents fuck you up. Yeah. And Which is... Do you know, every character in Ruby has got some fucking relationship uh, with their parents, so there's that. Exactly. So, 
in all, we did what we could with it. Yeah. You know, we, we went just out convincing there. ourselves here. We, yeah, we well, listen, listen, there's going to be so many podcasts where I, I, I'm going to be <laughs> standing on standing on the edge being like, fucking hell, I can't do this anymore. There is nothing to say. Was, yeah, that was And for this one, I feel happened. like there was enough to say. I just wasn't saying it. Neither were you, for sure. Uh, well, why weren't you saying it? I was hoping that you would put in points. I tried. Listen, I, I'm at limited knowledge here. You know more about it than I do. So. I just watched one more season. You should know, en- like, a, there's not that much more to go on, I promise you. Right. Like, there was enough, there was, a, there was little bits more, but there were a lot more, you know, there was a lot more stuff into season two which talked about family. True. Yeah. I'm rusty on my knowledge. Not a lot. I'm apparently rusty on my talking <laughs> skills. I'm rusty you are, you're on my quiet. knowledge. <laughs> Sorry! Thank you, that's more like it. Um, Gosh. I don't talk from my diaphragm, that's why. You should. I should. Uh, I don't even know where I talk from. This is actually You talk from your diaphragm for sure. You've got a loud fucking voice. I know, that's because I try. <laughs> I try and All speak. Right. Um, yeah, that was the first comparison podcast. Um, unusual comparison podcast, even. I forget the name of my show. Um, I'm going to try and make probably like an hour's worth of content in a week. Is why I've pretty much been delaying it. So I was hoping to make like, uh, either like two half an hour podcasts a week or two 20 minutes ones. This one was definitely towards the half an hour point. Yeah. So, um. God knows how. Yeah. <laughs> By talking about, a lot about Monty Ohm, I think. Yeah. Um, because, you know, he's, he was an inspiration. Now yeah. he's made us start this. Yeah. So we got off our asses and did it. We did. Actually, we're on our asses again. In fact, we were standing before we, and now we had to and sit now to, do to, this to do this podcast. But... So we're getting on our asses to do the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm, I'm all right with that. I'm all right for that for being the opening episode. I feel yeah. like we should have brought more energy into it. but Listen, we've only had one coffee today. <laughs> only one. It's true. It's true. <laughs> that and the cheeky Nando's, it wasn't quite enough to bring us to the level that we need to be at. But... You know, we've got, we, we've, we've got, got time to prepare. Got, yeah, we've got the first one done and that's the hardest part. Mm. So. Yep. So uh, wrapping up here, we I'm going to post the link with the podcast to send in some answers. And I mean, these can be seriously, like ridiculously specific. I can't even think of the right word. Obscure is there as well. Yeah. Um, trust me, there are some in here that I don't know what the hell <laughs> I can talk about. I'm sure I'll try for the life of me. Um... And whoever else is on the podcast, probably you. Yes. Um, so I think I think what's going to happen is I'm going to record on Mondays and yeah. probably Wednesdays. Okay, that's um, cool. I mean, like, Mondays for sure I'll be here. Yeah, it might just be, like, uh, if I post two a week, then I've got one with someone else and one without. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so I'm going to post the link. Please send some in. They don't... You don't have to rack your brain for it. This one was just a poem and a tea and, and Ruby the show. You can think of a celebrity. We've got some celebrities in there. Yeah. We've got some movies. We've got some shows. We've yeah, got, got we've like got some pop culture references, references coming out of our ears. <laughs> we haven't got John Cena. I, I I want to throw that in there. So memes. To, <laughs> memes. Throw them in. We can do it. Food items. Do it. Uh, anything. Anything. Just look around you and be. This is what I'm gonna do and send it in because trust me, you want to hear us try and do it. Yeah. Maybe. 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 You might not want to, but you should. You should, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to call it an end at uh, like 33 minutes past. We did all right. Okie dokie. We did all right. We're all, all right. done. Bye, guys. Bye.